Hello and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and today we're going to be playing around with making a Gravity Gun-esque weapon. Um, so let's start by creating a new scene. New scene. We're going to do something that we do a lot, but, uh, but it's good to have the practice. So we're just going to create a really quick scene. We're going to create a plane. We're going to make it 10 by 10, which actually means 100 by 100, because the these things are 10 meters, or rather 10 units uh, across by default. And we're going to put it at zero. We're going to make the big camera. Actually, we're just going to delete the big camera. I don't care, because we're going to be dragging in a standard assets first-person controller. Let's go ahead and throw this at zero 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 but then move it up a little bit so that it's not stuck in the ground as you can see um, right here so let's just move it up to one and hit play just make sure that stuff works all right cool we can look around we've got got a first person controller sweet so um so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically picking up objects and then throwing them with force and these objects are going to be physics objects before and after but probably not while we're holding them so, um, so let's start by creating some of those objects real quick. Um, I'm going to create a empty game object and I'm going to put on it one of our old scripts, uh, spawn grid spawner. And this will allow us to spawn a grid of objects where this thing is. So I'm just going to, um, do a five by five by five and we're just going to make a little cube, create a cube. We're just going to, so this doesn't have physics on it yet, so I'm just going to quickly add physics rigid body onto it. So this thing now, if we hit play, it should be a cube that just drops down due to the gravity. There we go. Hit the, hit the ground, perfect. So we're going to create a prefab out of this and put it into our folder here, gravity gun. Might as well save this scene and put it in there too for right now before we forget. And have something terrible happen. So, um, assign reference exception. Why are we getting that already? I didn't choose spawn cubes now. Oh, when I hit start, yeah, that's right. We we hit run once. Uh, so we didn't actually assign anything to have this thing spawn. So I'm going to get rid of the cube in the scene. We're going to go to this game object. We're going to put the cube into it. And actually, we can uh, we added this feature so that we can actually just spawn cubes right at this moment. And actually, let's not. Oh, I evidently can't undo that operation. So uh, let's just delete all these real quick. Maybe it would be cooler with them all together like that. I don't know. I'm gonna give them a little bit of space between. So when they drop, they do something. Ah, eh, yeah, whatever. Let's just let's just do it. Oops, I got rid of my cubes again. Spawn cubes now. I really probably shouldn't call that cubes, but it doesn't matter. So now we don't need this game object anymore. I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to hit play, and hopefully we'll have a big old pile of cubes that hit the ground. There we go. Cool. So now we've got a bunch of cubes to play with. So let's start working on that gravity gun script. So I'm going to create a C-sharp script. We're going to call it gravity gun. And... We're going to need a few variables here. Let's go ahead and start with public float um, grab distance equals, um, let's call, let's default it to 10.0 F. Uh, public float, actually public transform grab position. Um, so this is this is how far we can grab from. This is where we actually hold the object. Actually, let's call it um, hold position. Um, public float um, throw force equals um, 100.0 F. And let's go ahead and go public uh, force mode um, throw force mode. Anything else that we might need? This should be good for the start here. So, so what we're gonna do is, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need a couple other other things. We're gonna need a private game object uh, cr uh, held object. So this is gonna be what we currently are holding. So in update, 
let's first do the grabbing stuff. So, um, if uh, held object equals equals null, and let's go ahead and just, even though it will equal null, I like to be explicit. If held ob object equals equals null, if input dot get button down uh, fire one actually let's uh, make that a variable public string um, fire button equals fire one so now we can change that in the script very easily without having to change the script so if someone presses the fire button while we're not holding an object then what we're going to do is if um, physics dot raycast we're going to raycast from our gun to into the world um, so it's going to be from transform transform dot position transform dot forward and layer mask um, what are we going to do that um, I don't care about the layer mask, so we don't need that. What do we need? We need origin direction, hit info. Oh, we can just do that. Perfect. All right, let's do that. So, uh, out hit. Now, just regular hit. We haven't made it yet, so I really confused the compiler here. So, oops, one more bracket. So, let's first create that uh, raycast hit hit. And so if we hit an object, um, and actually we should have a, we should have some sort of layer mask, max distance, layer mask, hidden info, max distance, hidden info, max distance, layer mask. So max distance, we're going to make it at grab distance, layer mask, we're going to use layer mask, lowercase, which I'm going to create up here real quick. Public layer mask, layer mask. Oh yeah, and let's default this to negative one. That's usually the best thing to default it to because that'll mean everything. So, so we've hit something. What do we do with it? So we're going to take the, um, we're going to set uh, held object equals, um, Hit dot game uh, dot collider dot game object, and then we're going to do held. Uh, we're going to do held object. Wait, hit dot collider is still. Oh yeah, of course that's still in there. Um, so. So what we're going to do is we're going to disable the physics on this object and then we're going to move it into position. So um, uh, let's go ahead and do held object dot get component rigid body um, dot uh, what is it called? The rigid body is going to um, kinematic. We're going to set is kinematic equals true, so that means it no longer is being controlled by the physics system. So it's now kinematic and held. And then the other thing we're going to do is held object dot transform dot position equals um, hold position dot position. Actually, let's um, let's not do that here. We're going to be doing that pretty much every frame. Um, else so if we have an object hello object to transform dot position equals hold equals hold position dot position let's see if this works so if we hit save and we play and we put this on something so we're gonna put this on the camera and we're gonna give the camera a um, create an empty game object we're gonna put it in the camera this is going to be our hold position. I'm going to just put it a little bit in the Z and a little bit down, negative 1, negative 0 0.5. Let's see, if I put a sphere here, actually, let's just see how it does. So we're going to do that, save scene, save project, 
And um, this thing now has, we're going to give this game object for the hold position. And I'm going to change the layer mask to, where are we going to put these cubes at? Let's put them under interact. And so if we go into game up into the main camera here and select nothing and interact. So if we hit play now, got all these cubes. If I click, there we go. I'm holding a cube. Yay. So we're not changing the cubes orientation as we rotate. We can fix that really quickly. Um, Let's just um, do held object dot transform dot rotation equals um, uh, transform dot rotation. Actually, let's do hold position dot rotation. Save. So now if we hit play. And we click, we get a cube. Yay. Now it looks like it's kind of being held in front of us. Oh, we're still colliding with it pretty hard though, so that's that's no good. Um so why is it doing that? So if we go to our Oh yeah, which cube is this? So where am I? Falling to my death. Um how do I focus on things again? There we go. So let's find this cube here. There we go. And it says is kinematic, but we're also a we're also doing a bunch of other stuff. So let's just let's just uh, turn off their collider real quick. So um, held object dot get component actually dot collider I think dot collider no that's not in there dot get component collider dot enabled equals false. So now it won't bump into things. Save. All right, and then while we're in here, let's go ahead and do the, the rest of the logic here. So we're gonna make the hold object do its stuff, and then if um, input dot get button down, fire button, we're gonna punt this thing. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to undo the things that we did here. So we're going to do false and true. So this turns our collider back on and um, makes it so that uh, so that it's ready to ready to rock. And I'm going to move just before I forget. I'm just going to move the um, this position a little bit out. Just move it two units out so that it has less likelihood of actually bumping with our object the moment that we throw it and um and so uh all we're going to do now is we're going to do um we're going to need the rigid body twice so i'm going to cache that component real quick uh rigid body body equals rigid body so body dot is kinematic equals false we turn the collider on, and then what we're going to do is uh, body dot add force, um, throw force times. Um, what do I want to use? Oh yeah, uh, we'll use the. Um, let's just use transform dot forward. Lowercase transform dot forward. So this means go forward with our force amount, and we're going to then um, do force mode, uh, just pass in the force mode that we have above. Lowercase though. All right, and one last thing, um, we no longer want held object, so held object equals null now. So if we save, and we adjust our settings a little bit, so I'm gonna go into the Wait, force mode doesn't exist in this context. Oh, throw force mode. That's why. That's why I didn't know it. Throw force mode. Save. 
So now if we go to our inspector here, I'm going to make the throw force mode, we're going to make it velocity change. This will mean that it'll just become a velocity of 100. And let's see if this works. So if I hit play, we pick up an object, and I throw the object. And we pick up another object. Whoops. We throw the object. Woo! Yay! Basic gravity gun for the win. So that's a basic gravity gun in Unity 3D. Lots of fun. I'm sure that you can find uses for it. Probably easier to use if you have like uh, some sort of reticle, but this uh, this does work, so yay. Let's see what happens if we shoot in the ground. Okay, it didn't blow us up into the sky, so that's, that's good. Fun stuff. All right, so I'm going to call that a wrap. Save scene. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. That's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Um, enjoy playing around with the gravity gun. And you guys have a great one. I will catch you. Uh, so I've got a new job, which is great. And so things are going to be a lot better. But um, I need to figure out how all the time zones and stuff are going to be working. So I can't promise an episode tonight. I know that it's been a long time since we've done Escape. I'm really sorry. But uh, this is going to stabilize, I swear. So um, if, uh, if we can't do it tonight, we can't do it tonight. But I'm going to try. So you guys have a great one. And... I'll catch you either tomorrow or tonight with Scape at some point. See ya!